I'm Rob Stone with Fox Sports, and we welcome you to MLSsoccer.com's presentation from the MLS Digital Center here in Denver of the 20-year round table around a rectangular, rectangular table, because that's thinking out of the box. That's what got MLS to where we are right now. <laughs> the table is actually 20 years old. Right? <laughs> that, maybe that's what it is. So uh, Landon Donovan, yes, Joe sir. Cannon, Jeff Agus, all former teammates yep. with the earthquakes at some point, which I find fascinating. But l let's start with Goose. Um, Besides those awesome calves that I, I want to talk about <laughs> at some point, which are bigger I'm than gonna, my quads, which isn't saying much. I'm going to need to move down the table a little bit. <laughs> um, let, let's go big picture, because you were there day one, MLS. What, what were your opening memories from, whether it was the, the uniforms being released or the names of the clubs being announced and that first practice session with Bruce? It was like a frenzy. It was like being inside of like a hornet's nest, everything going. 150 miles an hour and you had no control you didn't know what was going to happen I remember the game in San Jose against the clash at that time with some interesting uh, interesting uniforms and, and just the buzz around Spartan Stadium at that point was was incredible and the game was probably the worst game I think I've ever played in in my life but it was the start of something and it was I, I think um, an auspicious start into something that you know we're sitting here in 20 years uh, later looking back on with uh, with envy you're from that. You're from that area. Did you go to that game? Oh yeah, definitely. You did? You're oh the yeah, game? I was at the game. He so. threw. He threw something at me. I remember. <laughs> Battery. No, bag I just or remember thinking to myself because um, I was a, a soccer player at Santa Clara University, and I was like, "Can someone please score?" I mean, I, you want soccer to to be so big as a kid, and it was zero zero the whole game, and I and I still to this day think when Eric when all this scored that goal, it was just a huge boost, and it was a huge sigh of relief for not just MLS, but all, all the American soccer fans that were out there watching. And Eric will remind you he scored. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was going to say, why would you have to bring up Eric? Every, every <laughs> once in a while as well. So what was that moment, Goose, where you said, ooh, you know what, maybe we can survive and thrive? Look, I don't think that moment came until a lot of years later. Right. Yeah. I think there was a lot of trial and error, and there was a lot of whether, you know, this, whether this league is going to stay afloat. I mean, the questions then were about viability and sustainability, and now, questions here about how big are we going to be I'm and curious from sorry I'm curious from your guys perspective when because I was 2001 I was 19 and I had no clue of what was going on in the big picture of the league so were you guys hearing all these I mean you must have been hearing rumors the league might I remember hearing the league might fold and I was thinking what this I had no I no idea what that meant so were you guys hearing that stuff well look at there were always rumors about whether the league was going to make it to the next year right mm -hmm. literally the next month right. And so there, you were not just a player, but you were selling the sport. You were always a pint, you know, you're always trying to sell it and play at the same time. And so we always got caught in that 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 crux of are we salesmen or are we athletes? <laughs> you know, I remember going to hotels, especially, you know, and you'll you'll know this Landon Joe with the national team, is you'd walk in and you'd have your US kid on and people would walk in and, and see the entire team and go, Oh, who are you guys? Are you a basketball team? <laughs> right. had nobody over five ten. Right. And uh, we'd say, oh yeah, we're, we're a basketball team. I mean, that's, that's the level of relevancy that I think not only the national team, but obviously this league has gotten to. People know who you are, you're relevant in the community, there's a connection, and, and now I think uh, the league is just really starting to take off. I think for me it was like every off season you're like, well, I have a job that's until, until actually, uh, you know, when we contracted after 2001, it was... Then it was a huge deal. Then we're back down to 10 teams. And I think uh, it really wasn't until that next expansion that you're kind of in the footing. I think uh, what, what we don't want to discuss in too much in depth was a lawsuit that was hanging over the league for a while. And, and once that got sorted out, I think MLS really has just grown leaps and bounds. And, and I think for me, uh, you know, there was times when you just didn't know. And I think uh, your arrival, I hate to say it, but also help promote the game and bring it in new light, especially in San Jose. Let's talk more about that. Yeah. <laughs> what was your thinking when, when you were a teenager and well, what your next move was going to be? Obviously, at that point, it's it's so much about yourself. And you're just, I was just excited. I'd been in Germany. I was excited to play. So when I started hearing these things, like the league might not be around and teams are contract, I didn't know what contraction meant. And I had heard rumors also that had we not won the cup that year, that yeah. San Jose was yeah. gone. And so they kind of had to keep us right. because we won the MLS Cup. But I had no idea. Now, 
when you kind of see the other side of it, it's fascinating because now that's that's never a, a possibility anymore. You know, the league's gonna be around forever now, but there was a time where it might not have been. Let's get to the question though. I think we all really want to know um, why the blonde hair, <laughs> blonde hair job at the All Star Game in San Jose. I wish I had a good answer for you. <laughs> Did you come up with young. that? You were just young. I was an idiot. <laughs> you were just I don't know. And subsequently, now I'm paying for it with no more hair. I think it burned all the hair off. <laughs> I have no idea, Rob. I wish I had a good answer. I was young. Thought it was cool. Uh, what was it like, the three of you guys in the locker room together, during that very successful run you guys had in the Bay Area? I'll start with you, Joe. That was great. I mean. Um, for me personally, uh, you know, I went from a kid to kind of a veteran. I think Goose was my roommate um, the the first year that Frank Yallop brought him in, and like I'll never forget, it was uh, <laughs> it was before, it was when dial-up internet. So Goose took the, <laughs> the the phone line. He had the guitar <laughs> and the remote control. So as a young rook or a young kid, you're just kind of stuck there. All right, I'm gonna do whatever this guy does. He's a big timer. Um, but I'll never forget, it was a uh, night before the first game in LA in Pasadena. We, uh, it was about 10 p.m. and Goose shuts the lights out and says, it's time to go to bed. And I'm just thinking to myself, <laughs> wait a minute, I, I can't go, I, I, this is the earliest I've ever gone to bed ever. And so so it, we crawled over with food. <laughs> <Yeah. you know. laughs> so, Come on, Joe, tell the whole story. Uh, people want to know. But it, honestly, it was like that kind of professionalism that, that really helped and I think um, and then we added the addition of Landon, you know, right before that game. And it just seemed that was a special team because I think we had a lot of good young players, Jimmy Conrad, Richie Mulrooney, uh, Wade Barrett, who doesn't get enough credit in my opinion. Uh, you know, guys like Eddie Robinson that were just, and Dwayne DeRosario who, you know, were, were, were newcomers. What was Frank's leadership style at the helm of this burgeoning kind of? Well, I mean, I, I'm curious to s um, know how he lured you away to, to come out there because for me it was easy um, I wanted to come back and play and they said this is where you're going so that was you that know was it but from the minute I met Frank I could tell that he was more than anything a good human being and we just connected immediately and so my impression of him and I will forever be indebted to him for this is I didn't play the first game except for like 20 minutes didn't play the second game and we lost at home to Dallas and I was really frustrated because I thought I should be playing uh, probably wasn't right but I thought I should be playing so the next game I believe I played and we went on a really good streak for a while but I didn't score I didn't have much to do but he he said you know you're winning the team's winning and we're gonna keep playing the same team and that was one thing that whole year is it was so competitive because you knew if you played a game and the team won you were going to play and you were going to keep playing and guys never had to worry about it. Uh, you knew if you had a bad game and the team lost, you might come out of the lineup, but if you won and that was it. So that was sort of the way he operated. He was very laid back and he just said, listen, I'm going to let you guys perform and if you do well, you're going to keep going. What was the conversation like to leave DC to go to San Jose? Uh, it was interesting. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, it was really interesting. You know, I won three championships with DC at the time in four or five years. And I think DC were looking to retool and completely reinvent the, the club. And uh, there was an opportunity to trade me to from you know what's one of the uh, best teams in the league at that point to essentially one of the worst who hadn't made the playoffs since since year one. Um, and so when um, you know Thomas and Kevin, I remember this distinctly, it was after a national team game, came up and they got me in the lobby and they said we're, we've made a trade and uh, we're going to trade you to San Jose. I was thinking to myself, oh my God, I've got to go all the way you know, to California, you know, literally pack my bags and go. And I'm thinking, you know, I, I just, I don't want to go. So Frank and, and Dom, who was the assistant coach, Dominic Kinnear, came in and <laughs> literally remember sitting at the table, staring Frank in the eye and go, I'm not going. <laughs> and Frank awesome. looked at me like, what are you talking about? He got all white because, you know, they've Changes made a significant <laughs> thread. <laughs> it's done. It's done. We've already, we've already made the deal. Oh, so Frank just said, look, think about it. I knew Frank. I played with him, and we were an, at an all-star game together. I knew Frank was, was a good guy, and obviously played with Dom for a number of years. So uh, my better wits took over, and I spoke to my parents and, and uh, people around me. And, uh, you know, I, I said, look, let's give it a shot. It's, can't, couldn't, you know, what, what, am, what are my other options here? So I went, uh, went to San Jose and it, literally the first or second training, I remember being around all of the guys that are sitting at this table, Manny Lagos and Ronnie Eklund, 
you could tell that there was something incredibly special. And the way that Frank managed, and he's not a taskmaster, he, he allowed people to play within themselves. And I think he's a lot like Bruce in the sense that he, he doesn't micromanage things and he allows people to essentially be who they are within a certain system. And I think we grew. And I remember, I think it was the first game we played LA where we went up 3-0 on, on LA and we, everyone's thinking to themselves, what are we doing here? <laughs> How did we get to this point? And they came back two goals, we hung on at the end. Um, and, and I think that was the start of something incredibly special. Obviously landing coming in as well, um, set the tone for uh, the expectations of the club. And so there were just so many good things that happened in the course of the next couple of years. And that trade couldn't have been, it's probably the best thing that has ever happened in my career outside of being allocated to DC originally. Maybe the biggest best trade in MLS history. I think it's certainly in the top five as far as what you meant to that franchise going forward. You can you can blush Your off camera will be in the, uh, if mail. you want. <laughs> thank you, thank you very uh, much. But, but you hit you hit on a, a topic. You hit on a gentleman that you guys have all dealt with, uh, and he is on the Mount Rushmore of American soccer. He's on the Mount Rushmore of Major League Soccer. Bruce Arena, love him, hate him, whatever you want to say about him. But this guy is an absolute legend. Um, I want to know, and you had him. In, did he coach you in college? College, professional, national and national teams. teams. Yes. Good Lord. Sorry, I spent a lot of, and I lived with him for, uh, and I, co I coached with him in Virginia, so I lived <laughs> so, live with him. And so there's so much to talk about Bruce, and, and we all know this, this kind of gruff exterior that's out there, but we also know he's got a soft side, and he, he deeply cares, and he, and he loves things. But your first impression, how did, I, I want to go, how did he recruit you <laughs> out of Texas? Um, he came to a, a, a game I was playing with my club team, and um, I, the first experience I really had was I actually was recruited by Duke. And I went to go see Duke play Virginia at Duke, and uh, Duke w wound up winning. And I remember he and Dave Sarakin were, were there, and uh, I remember going up and shaking their hand and seeing them outside, and we had just a brief conversation. But it really goes back even further um, when I was playing with the Maccabee games, and Dave Sarakin was my roommate. Yes. And so Dave was such a great guy, and I had such a good relationship with him. I knew that Dave being at Virginia and being with Bruce would have been a good decision and um, it was very very difficult and ultimately came down between those two schools and, and I'm very fortunate for the decision I made. It's just interesting how these decisions when you make them can lead your career in a certain direction and had I stayed at Duke who, who knows I mean I could have been successful but who knows what would have happened. What, what was your what's your best Bruce moment? Oh my god. Uh, there, there was a there was a moment when I at Virginia where um, you know we he, he decided to take this penalty kick, and I can't remember. He was just he's uh, taking screwing around. <laughs> it's going it's going in a good yeah. direction already. And he and he calls it a Peruvian. I don't know if made Peruvian or some some foreign name. And he whips around, turns around, and then strikes it as hard as he could. And he pulled his hamstring like literally off the bone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he just goes down like in a heap. <laughs> we thought he was kidding, and he and ultimately he was like out for weeks. And, <laughs> <laughs> Probably still is out because of that. Awesome. And I, rem I remember that it was just absolutely hilarious. <laughs> what do you remember? What, what your dealings with him? It was just with the U.S. team. I just thought he was a very confident coach. I thought he was, uh, he, he was a bit ahead of his time. I think as a goalie, he was the first coach I knew that was, he said it, even numbers in the back. Um, that's the way the game's played. And he was very confident in his team, he, the guys he had out there. And I think as a player, that's, why he does so well is they really feed off that confidence. I don't have the same pedigree of experience with him that Landon and Van Goose do, but he was just someone like these guys said, would let you uh, do your own thing. And, uh, and I, I think that paid off for him in the long run. You got a million, Bruce. You I got to. a lot of stories, yeah. Um, I'm just trying to figure out, you know, the, the beauty of Bruce is that he's really, he really cares and he's really competitive and he really hates to lose and loves to win, but he's also really laid back in a lot of ways and he's just very, just sort of just, he doesn't take it too seriously in that way, although you know he really cares. So, you know, he's not the guy who knows every stat of every soccer player around the world. He probably doesn't watch many games. He doesn't, he's not that into it in that way, but he cares about being successful. He cares about the guys he coaches. Um, I have a lot of funny stories, but uh, the best stories I have with Bruce are when he, when you can have a conversation with him and you can see 
the soft side come out and you can see that he cares about you. And we had a lot of, I'm sure Goose did too, a lot of moments over the years where you butt heads on things. It's just part of it. But you always knew he cared. You always knew he cared and that he had your back. And that as a player is so, so important. And, and that's, I, I'll, I'll echo that. The one thing you knew about Bruce was if he, if he, if he were part of his team, he, he cared about you not only as a player but as a person. Yeah. And he would do anything for you. And he's, he's very loyal in that, very, that regard. Very, loyal. You, you have to respect that. I've heard a lot of stories of guys getting elected to the Hall of Fame <clears throat> and the first person calling to thank him is Bruce. And that's Bruce had awesome. never coached him at any point, but just as a nice thank you for what you've done for the league. What was the conversation like, though, when when you said, I, I want to retire, I want to step away, and, and you had to break that <laughs> Well, I'll Bruce. tell you two conversations I had. The first conversation was when I told Bruce that I wanted to take some time off in 20... That was the Cambodia 2013. trip? 2013, yes. We'll label that and, the Cambodia uh, trip. We had dinner. I've got my t-shirt, by the way. <laughs> We had dinner, I'll never forget, we had dinner at Mangiamo's yep. in Manhattan Beach, right on the pier. And uh, we sat down, it was me, him, maybe Rich Motzkin, my agent. And I said, I need to take some time off. This was in January, I said, I need to take some time off. My mind is gone, I'm, you know, I'm feeling depressed, I don't feel good about where my life is going right now, I just need to get away. Totally opened up my heart. And he said, well, I think that's a terrible decision. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, God, really? So I mean, I totally poured my heart out. But you know, he, I think as time went on, he sort of yeah. realized that that's what I needed. But um, so that was one interesting conversation. And then juxtapose that with when I told him that I was done. I told him middle of the year, maybe July or so, that I was going to retire. And I said, I'm. I just want to let you know so you have time to plan and prepare and everything that this is going to be my last year. And he looked at me, and this really touched me, and he looked at me and he said, I'm really happy for you. And this was in the middle of the year. I mean, he's trying to plan his team for next year and, you know, losing an important player and all that. And that was really important to me.